Hello and welcome to the Join Dota League Season 4. Hopefully you found the stream without too much trouble as this game is on very short notice between Team 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 and Together We Did. It's going to be a best of two in the group stage of the JDL Season 4 America Division. And already some very interesting stuff uh, going on in this draft. We're going to see the early bands very heavily focusing on carries with Slark, Lycan, Spectre as well as Terrorblade taken out of the pool. I'm honestly surprised that both of these teams focus so heavily on these heroes, letting Skyrath Mage, Death Prophet, Faceless Void, and Batrider into the first picking stage. Team 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 get their hands on the Skyrath Mage and Bat, whereas Death Prophet and Faceless Void for Together We Did It. Whenever Death Prophet sneaks her way towards that first picking stage, teams are all too happy to snag it up. I haven't actually seen Together We Did It play under this name, um, but definitely some familiar faces playing today with them. Taku to Nurla, Bartlett, Noobs are Russ, and Sexy Bambo is the lineup that we're running with. Although I think that Sexy Bambo is a proper stand-in. We saw him earlier today standing in and did a pretty good job at it. And as far as Team 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 is concerned, a couple of their names are recognizable. Um, but still, I haven't seen most of them play, and definitely not under this name. This is new for me, and I believe this is their first game to join Dota League Season 4, if not the first, very early on. WWD, DK, 207. I love... Well, I don't know. I, I love Licky. Uh, okay, wh whatever. We'll, we'll just skip that one. Sorry, bud. I, I can't pronounce your name. Guanzo. Um, that's a familiar face. Either way, Jakira is going to be next pickup for Together. We did it already. A lot of damage, both physical and magical, to pump into that Chronosphere. A decent amount of team fight power coming out from <clears throat> Together. We did it, but it is focusing very heavily on that lockdown that the Chrono offers. Team, team, team are going to go ahead and pick up the Vengeful Spirit. Already, it kind of synergizes nicely with the Skyrath Mage, a decent roaming duo, nice defensively as well. And then you're also going to be deny picking that away from Together We Did It, so they don't pick up the Vengeful Spirit for themselves to snap that Batrider last. So it's going to mean that the Batrider initiations are a lot easier to pull off and a lot more guaranteed. So in that sense, a good pick for Team Team Team. TTT really haven't shown their hand as of yet. Um, <clears throat> With how they really want to play this game right now, Batrider could be going pretty much anywhere off lane mid. Skyroth Mage, Vengeful Spirit, similar story. They could be roaming, they could go aggressive, they could play in a defensive try lane. Uh, but together we did it. Their lanes are a little bit more static. Presumably mid Death Prophet and Faceless Void Jakiro Abaddon lane. The Abaddon pick kind of catches me off guard. I wasn't expecting them to go for something along those lines. But having that hard purge off with the um, Aphotic Shield is always going to be a useful tool at your repertoire, despite being a fairly greedy support seconds yeah usually i like seeing a bad up against lineups with few disables that are fairly easy to read especially long duration ones like i don't know beastmaster roar and marana arrow right now team 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 have a decent amount of that um but i still don't think it warrants the abaddon pick or at least now i think he could have waited off until the fifth pick for that one but still, it's going to offer them a nice bit of utility to keep the Death Prophet and Faceless Void alive, which doesn't go amiss. Team 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 will snag themselves up a Brewmaster, another Blink Initiator for them to work with. Ten seconds to go. And the initiation power coming out from TTT is pretty strong in this game. Ten Once the Blinks seconds. come out for the Brewmaster as well as the Batrider, together we did it might find difficulty maneuvering out of the map safely. Together we did it, their lineup, it doesn't come online at such a defined moment as those Blink Daggers up for the Batrider and Brewmaster, and at the early portions it's going to be fairly passive, and we'll maintain that until we have a couple of core items, presumably BKBs for the Faces Void and or Death Prophet. Um, Death Prophet might forego the BKB at the earlier stages and maybe just get a Yule's, disjointing the Magic Missile as well as the Boulder Toss Sun and... Avoiding a Skyrath Mage Mystic Flare is fairly easy with that item, and maybe goes for the BKB after, but for the Faceless Void, I'd like to see this rushed, and if not rushed, maybe after the likes of Mask of Madness Maelstrom. Right now, the last picks for both teams. Team 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 need a little bit more carry potential, and honestly, finding something that's going to carry up against the Faceless Void and Death Prophet is a pretty tall order to ask of any single year, singular hero. Uh, the Vengeful Spirit can bolster the damage of said hero pretty easily with the minus armor as well as the plus damage, and Medusa might be a choice that Team 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 are comfortable in taking as long as the Brewmaster and Batrider can make enough space. That said, Faces Void and Death Prophet definitely have the damage to punch through <clears throat> Medusa's apparently unpenetrable magic shield. So still not sure if the um, stream is actually picking up any viewers or what's going on here. Thanks for tuning in and hopefully you'll be able to find it. This is, <clears throat> yet again, um, the Joint Total League. 
We're going to have a um, the second banding stage coming up from both teams. Right now, together we did it, or taking their time. They also have first pick, so this is pretty much the time for them to consider the ban as well as the pick Dancing together. To mm, I'm not sure what they're most scared of. Potentially, we're just going to see the Medusa taken out, but it's going to be a gyrocopter. Also, Dying offering them a similar amount of late game potential, although not as much. It makes up for it, in fact, the gyrocopter in the early portions of the game, especially in backed up by the likes of a Skyrath Mage and Ventral Sphere, can pump out a ridiculous amount of damage. With the Magic Missile, as well as Concussive Shot, to CC down those single targets, and then with the Rocket Barrage, to do the deeps and do the deeps at will, if you're able to isolate that single target. Right now, together we did it, or presumably looking for an offlaner, although they might um, consider throwing that Faceless Void towards the offlane. I think it's just a little too risky in order to do so. It would be a Faceless Void that gets a little to nothing out of the early portions of the game, and that's a Faceless Void that doesn't transition very well, so I'd like to see them... Um, Let's see, maybe just pick up the Tidehunter for themselves, offering even more big AoE team fight. It would leave them fairly melee heavy or low ranged on most of their heroes. Death Prophet, the exception to that rule, but she'll be soloing up the mid lane. I still think it could work out for them. Um, he would still be at a bit of a disadvantage up against the Skyrath Mage and Ventral Spirit. Um, Tri-Lane plus one, although he'd still have that fallback potential of going into the Ancients and being able to get his farm and levels there. So I think that's a pretty solid choice. Okay, so, good news for game number two. I should have Mike Loris on the line. This game was at a very short notice. We were pretty much told 15 minutes, 30 minutes before the um, game was scheduled, and then I didn't get here until like five minutes before game start. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the JDL scheduling is always is a pleasure, but the teams are getting here on time, which makes things a lot easier for us, or at least for the most part. We at least have members of the team. Viper the Last Band coming out from Team Team Team. Would have fit decently well into Together We Did It's lineup, although I think um, just going for that larger AoE offlaner would have been a little bit better for them. There is a little bit of aggressive potential coming out from Together We Did It, although I'm not sure they're going to have anybody to abuse the Abaddon's shield backup and Ten going aggressive in go. that lane, so I doubt that that's going to happen. Together We Did It, Five seconds. at this point, are going to be picking up blind as they don't know what Team Team Team's fifth hero is going to be in. Right now, seconds. Team 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 kind of need to pick something that carries hard or that just stomps the early game. Together we did it, are going to go for the Vano, and I'm not exactly sure how these lanes are going to work out for them. Together we did it, have a fairly flexible way of maneuvering these heroes throughout the lanes. It could be the likes of mid Venomancer, off lane Void with safe lane Death Prophet, mid Death Prophet, safe lane Void, off lane Veno with supports or without supports. There's just a plethora of ways that they can shuffle around these heroes, which is going to work towards their advantage as Team 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 might not be able to get ideal matchups. I think it's fairly safe to assume that DP is going to be mid up against the Brewmaster with a Batrider off lane, and together we did it might be able to work around that and there could be a couple of mind games coming up from either side team 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 reserve their time. last pick is going to be considered thoroughly as they still have a decent amount of reserve time left 10 seconds before we are going to see their hands completely on the table and it is going to be that deuce i was talking about earlier it is going to offer them a wonderful hero to carry this to the late game if they need to and also decent at fighting up against faces void popping your ultimate before the chronosphere comes out is actually fairly easy in the current state of affairs is the increased time cast on the chronosphere makes it fairly easy for medusa to pop the stone gaze and a stone gaze medusa can't really be focused inside the chronosphere which is one of faces void's biggest strengths although they have the damage to kill off this dusa i'm not sure they have enough lockdown kitinger is going to be fairly easy with the slows at their disposal then again they don't have anything super hard that Medusa has to worry about. Their only true stun outside of ultimates is the Ice Path from Jakiro, and that's questionable at best. They will have a Yules from Death Prophet to set that up, um, but really, just one Ice Path isn't going to phase Medusa Damn that much. Team Team Team, I think the crucial timing for them is when those Blink Daggers come online. If they're Damn able to get six. kills with the Brew, Batrider, and make space for this Medusa, I'm liking their lineup a little bit more. Together we did it. I like most of it, with the exception of the Abaddon pick. It just kind of feels a little bit out of place. Okay, so because this was a short notice game, I actually didn't turn on my mic in game. So let me go ahead and do that now, as well as turn down the camera decel. Sorry about this. Um, behind the scenes, inside Brandis's options. Well, we did start with pause, so you're actually not going to miss a single heartbeat of action. As we will now go ahead and introduce our teams on the dire side. We're going to have Team 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 playing on that side of the map with 207 playing on the Ventral Spirit. The Starcross Lover is going to be WWD on the Skyrath Mage. Barrett are going to be played by Guanzo DK on the Brewmaster, and I love 
LKY on the Medusa. Sorry about not pronouncing your name correctly. It's, it's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Occupational hazard, I suppose. Taku's going to be playing on the Venomancer on the Radiant with, um, oh dear. I, I cannot remember the name. TWI, DI, oh, we did something today. I don't know. <laughs> Noobs are wrestling the Death Prophet, Bartlett on the um, Abaddon, we're going to have Faces Void, handled by a sexy bambo, heading towards the off lane presumably, with safe lane farming Jakiro, no, 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 it's not safe lane farming Jakiro, support Jakiro, played by Tuna Erla, it's going to be Venomancer getting that core amounts of farm in this bottom lane, it's going to be a dual lane setup coming out from TWDI, as... The face is void with Emphotic Shield behind him as well as the Time Walk. Doesn't have really much fear. Actually, no, they're going to throw Bartlett down in bottom. Hmm. It's it's a decent choice, I suppose. He'll be running the polling operations and getting experience. I think just soaking up top might have served him better and potentially saving the face is void. Let's see if Sexy Bambo's play is going to be up to snuff here as he goes up against a fairly stun-heavy lineup, at least as far as the two supports are concerned. A lot of damage and control coming out from those. Once they hit level 2 or 3 is when Void really needs to be scared. Once they have the stun as well as the silence available for WWD. The early wardage coming out from either side. The Dire Observer ward is going to be blocking the pull through camp as well as giving some decent vision of the support rotations. No such ward is going to be placed by the Faceless Void who's currently going to be given a little guff by these two supports. They'll be able to spot out their rotations but they are going to have access to their pull should they need it. The, the early on. wards are not going to be contested very heavily by either team. Sexy Bambo going to get the one up top. It's a bounty for him. And bottom, it's going to be a double damage rune sat on by Takis. So both of these runes are going to go the way of the Radiant. Okay, so before I forget, it's together we did it. Okay, so my goodness, it's ridiculous. I can't actually remember a name to save my life. But that said, this is my first time casting them, and it's not a very memorable name. Um... Yeah, it seems kind of generic either way. Together we did it. Let's see if they're going to be able to do it today. Batrider and Bottom isn't going to have a great time at all. Venomancer can pretty much zone him out solo. And with the Jakiro as well, there's a lot of dot damage coming out from these two. And with the double damage rune as well for the first portion of this first wave, Venomancer is pretty much going to have this on lockdown. Gale's going to be throwing the wave Guan, so I don't think they have any kill potential, but they sure as hell are going to try. Yeah, they're diving a little too deep. Looking for fires thrown out, but they're taking a little bit too much damage, I think. Guanzo is going to survive throughout, and everybody's diving under the tower in a very peculiar fashion. They don't take too much damage, but that was a very questionable move coming out from the um, Radiant team. I, I don't think that would have succeeded in pretty much any universe, unless you have more levels on your Jakiro to throw out Ice Path or subsequent disables. I don't know, maybe they, they were hoping for just a lucky bash as Sexy Bambo's looking forward. He time walks up onto WWD. He doesn't have any points to the bash, however, and I think that might have just cost him the first blood. He's going to tango through some trees. Now looking for any disable coming out from 207 isn't fast enough to get the magic missile range, and Sexy Bambo is going to be able to escape, although at the cost of two of his tangos and a whole truckload of regen after the fact, as he's going to be completely dry as far as HP regeneration is concerned, and... Well, we do have a smoke that's been completely spotted out by Radiant Ward. They're going to pop it immediately. A very peculiar move coming out from these two supports. His Vengeful Spirit just walks too close to the lane, and, well, that that's a wasted smoke, pretty much. Yeah, Faceless Void in this top lane isn't going to be having a great time at all. He should get a little bit of levels, but he's pretty much going to be destroyed and can't put any pressure alone on this Medusa. And even with the supports there, I don't think they would be able to, and in that sense... TT are going to be pretty happy. Uh, Medusa, although not getting all of these DS under tower, is still going to be looking comfortable, especially as this game progresses. I expect her to take up a little bit more um, substantial lead, or at least maintain free farm. As the Venomancer is doing down in bottom, the real winner in this... <clears throat> early game is actually the Brewmaster, fairly surprisingly, doubling up the Death Prophet CS 14 and 6 compared to 7 and 1 of the DP. The DP... I would say it has an edge in this lane, and the fairly hardy one at that, just being able to spam out the wave, that doesn't really come until the bottle's available, and DP's bottle just now is there. And at the other levels, Brewmaster can give her a little bit of guff. I don't expect this to remain the status quo, and if it is, props to the Brewmaster. We'll have to take a look at that at future times. Right now, it's going to be a consistent push down to bottom with the look at fire as well as the spam of the Plague Wards. There's nothing that they can do, but it's going to be top where the first blood happens. Bambo just playing way too aggressively into Eventual Spirit as well as Skyrath. I don't really know what he was doing there, but he's going to end up falling, giving the first blood gold the way of the Skyrath Mage. Brewmaster is going to need a Crypt Swarm in mid, but this relentless tower push down in bottom is pretty much going to secure. 
Together we did it this tower. With look at fire as well as the plague wards, as I was saying earlier, there's nothing the Batrider can do to stop this push at all. He'll be able to pull off the normal creeps, but the plague wards are still going to be working away at the towers. Although they might not be able to get it immediately, especially once level 5 comes out from TWDI, they're going to be able to take towers and take towers in a heartbeat. And they should be able to rotate to other lanes and maybe put some pressure onto the Dusa. But as the status quo stands, TTT are looking wonderful in this early game, with the exception being that Batrider. He's going to rely very heavily on the supports, making him a couple of stacks or maybe making some himself. In order to come back into this game, his Blink Dagger is going to be heavily delayed, if it comes out at all, at a decent timing. He's getting good levels, or at least better levels than Bambo in the soft lane, so at least has that going for him. Although Bambo does snag his level 4 after giving up the first blood. Still, uh, when as far as comparing off laners, and in that sense, I think all three lanes are looking good for TTT. Mid the Brewmaster secures himself an Invis rune, only level 5, however, DK can't really make a kill happen with this. Um, and I don't think he's going to try to, although ganking him is going to get a lot harder. Still, an incredibly passive early game where TWDI are going to be content pushing these towers, and Team 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 are going to be content securing farm for the Medusa. They're going to Photic shield up the Catapult, making sure that it survives for that little bit longer. And, oh, very unfortunate, the other Catapult wasn't destroyed fast enough, so they're not going to have that little bit of extra boost when it comes to the pushing power under the tower. But the tower's already down to half health, and... Batrider, this is all he can do and all he can hope to do. Tranquil Boots also picked up by Guanzo. That's even going to further delay the Blink Dagger. Faces Void's kind of in a similar story. If they just turn on the Aquila coming out from the Medusa, they could probably push down this lane, although it would probably give too much the way of the Faces Void, whereas DWDI don't have to worry about that in their safe lane. It's the Batrider can't really clear um, their wave away and they'll get the tower better. The Death Prophet in mid is going to be split upon. The damage is going to be there with the Mist Coil. No, it's going to be Brewmaster getting the last hit and now for Bartlett throws the stone his way, but DK has not enough mana to go for the Thunderclap, and the Abaddon's rotation is going to be completely wasted. The first usage of the split is going to net them a kill, kind of has to be expected. The crit comes out from DK, and he gets another one going to burst through that aphotic shield and going to secure a double for DK. Mm, faces Void is also your sexy bamboo. Might not be looking too sexy with a bash into his face, but he is going to be able to survive, bottled up by the DP, and potentially going to eat another bottle before backing away into his lane. This Brewmaster is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Even after passing through the phase boots as an intermediate item before the Blink Dagger, he's going to have it at a really fast click. Expect 7 to 9 minutes from DK. If he keeps up the level of farm, and if he gets any more kills. Ice Path and bottom into the Gale, looking potentially for a tower deny. Liquid Fire also going to land, as is the Duo Breath. Guanzo is moving like a snail. Liquid Fire now in the tower deny attempt is going to be successful from Batrider. The Batriders played this lane pretty well, and Team Team Team, a very strong opener coming out from them. The Star Power, as well as familiar names coming out from TWDI, don't seem to be cutting it as it stands. TTT. Their Batrider is the one that needs the most catching up, but I definitely think he's going to be able to do so. They don't have any stacks prepared for him as of yet, but a Batrider that just gets a couple minutes inside the jungle, or maybe gets involved in a couple of kills, is going to be able to make that comeback, and I don't think that's really their greatest of concerns. The Medusa's item build this game is going to be Aquila into Power Treads. After this, we'll have to see where the Dusa goes. Honestly, I don't think Medusa item builds matter that much, as long as the 6-slotted build is eventually going to come to Sexy Bambo's Silence after Magic Missling. They are going to probably have enough damage if the backtracks aren't in Sexy Bambo's favor, and they'll have enough. Looking for one more Arcane Bolt, he's bashing under Tower WD! Is almost going to drop with the TP's in. Skyroth Mage is dead. They get the Faceless Void, but it's going to be at the cost of WWD's life. As Taki drops a ward and a couple more auto attacks, that bash from Faceless Void. Securing them at least something out of the loss of their faces. Still not a very happy situation to be in if you're TWDI, although they are going to start the five-man push. I'm not sure if this is going to be enough to really deter TTTT in this game. They're going to start it up on the safe lane, coming out from the dire side, popping the exorcism. It is level one with three points up in the witchcraft, so it does a pretty decent chunk of damage, especially with Look of Far and the spam of these plague wards. Medusa is going to mop a couple of these up as an ice path completely whiffs. DTT, they're going to lose these tier 1 towers, but I think that's a necessary evil for them. I don't think they can really contest very much until they have those blinks available. And once they do, then they can hope to jump in. The Venomancer wards are going to be really annoying for these blink carries. Attempted to deny, not going to be successful, as Skyrath Mage is not hitting with that much damage and not timed perfectly either. We're going to see Medusa still continuing to farm away. Pitter patter, pitter patter, onto those creeps. Brewmaster. Radiant's mid tower is getting so close to that blink dagger, and once he has that, 
it's going to be go time for them, and maybe a little bit faster. Medusa's forced into the stone gaze. Sexy Bamboo is staying in front, looking for the body box, finds the body box, completely out of mana. They're going to be able to burst down this Medusa with just the painful slows. It's death of a thousand poison stings, and they're going to be able to find it. Now inside everybody, DK is going to look for the clap, can't find the clap. Now Chronosphere are focusing him down with Bambo. And now the follow-up dual breath as well as the abandoned dream cold. They're not able to get off the damage. And now silence and sexy bambo. Sexy bambo is going to be bashed in by the Brewmaster minions. Not enough backtracks there to save you. Brewmaster's gonna have to back off but this earth panda before. Before this ends, as he's incredibly low, but still able to get that off is crucial in this fight for TGT. Up in the air, Venomancer is going to be spinning, brought down to the ground, but the Crypt Swarm, perfectly timed coming out from Noob's R Us. That was beautiful. Taku is going to be pursued by the Bat Rider and company. It's going to be 3 to 6, our kill score, after that last engagement. TWI, they find a little bit more than I thought they would. It was a ill fated jump in coming out from TGT. I think they tried to defend that a little bit too much in Skyrath Mage. What are you doing? You're in between too many new heroes. Like, walking up the ramp here is pretty much certain doom. Yeah, not going to be a pretty happy place for him to be in. And it's going to be even more gold spent the way of TWDI. I think time is come for our first look at the graphs at a little bit less than 10 minutes in. And after those last couple of team fight wins, TWDI are currently at almost... <clears throat> even out in the gold graph. This is pretty impressive, however, The Team 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 have been able to maintain this much lead when they're losing towers, um, which I think is pretty important to notice, is they're down 2-0 to zero towers, and that is going to be gold in the bank as soon as they're able to meet those uh, demands. Right now, the push is going to continue from TWDI. I would be tempted to say that if this were 6.81, they'd be looking a lot better as the tower gold just isn't really up to snuff right now. Aphotic Shield onto the Death Prophet to keep this exorcism running as much as possible. They'll try to clear out these Serpa Wards, or Plague Wards, excuse me, but they just can't do it. They don't have anybody that's really adept at taking them out with the exception of Medusa. And she doesn't want to leave her farming heaven up inside the north lane. <clears throat> Tier 1 tower in mid. It's going to fall and it's going to be the Death Prophet to take that last hit. And together we did it, are going to be content with that extra bit of gold and end up backing off. Right now the Blink Dagger is available for DK, um, just picking it up inside the stash, as well as the Blink Dagger on the Bat Rider. He's been forced into jungling a little bit after getting one kill. That's all that Guanza has been involved in, and now it's go time for Team Team Team. I think they're going to be pretty comfortable with how this game is looking for them right about now. I think this is kind of the expected best for them, as there's not really anything more to really look at. They are farming on the Medusa, and that's wonderful. They're going to be getting a Yasha on Medusa, working towards that Mantis style, and the Faceless Void isn't getting very much. Death Prophet and Venomancer are going to be annoying, but they're going to fall off at some point, especially the Venomancer, as magic damage isn't really going to phase them much, especially if you see the likes of a pipe potentially built. Mm, not sure actually who would build it. Maybe the Bat Rider, maybe the Brewmaster. There's not a natural pipe carrier on their team. It's going to be a potential jump in bottom with the smoke coming out from Team Team Team. They're looking for the pounce onto TWDI and they're going to be able to find Taku as well as Tunerla. Pulled back under tower. Tunerla is going to be bursted down. Magic Missile is secure. Brewmaster Split comes out. They are going to purge off a little bit of the disables with the boulder going the way Bartlett. No ultimate available for a level 4 Abaddon and the damage should be enough. For, um, time walk forward. Chronosphere it's purely as a defensive mechanism coming out from Sexy Bamboo. Silence as well as an Arcane Bolt throwing the way of Taku is... Going to be popped that Aphotic Shield, and now 207 is going to throw a Magic Missile away of Taku. He gets the ultimate off, however, before he falls, and isn't falling that fast as the stain coming out from TWDI is pretty significant. Time walk forward by Sexy Bambo, looking to clean up after the Venomancer ulti. It's going to be DK looking for the bashes. It gets a miss, but the miss is not going to be there for News Are Ross. Guanzo looking to firefly his way back to safety, and he'll be able to make it. That's a level one Venomancer ultimate, which actually isn't that significant. I That felt like a level 11 ulti. That was pretty... Pretty ridiculous. Just a lot of dot damage coming out from them. Mim the Chikiro are dishing, even though it's at a very early portion of the game. This is where they shine, and I don't know. I was questioning whether that fight would go well for... Together we did it as they used the Chronosphere purely defensively, but somehow they managed to pull it out. 6-7, to seven, the kill score is going to be tied up, and into the towers they're going to go again. The bigger issue for TWDI is going to be pushing into that high ground, and at this point I'm not sure they really have the tools to do it as long as Team 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 don't get picked off themselves and are looking for the pickoffs. 
TWDI, however, have made themselves an advantage in this game. As far as the net worth is concerned, probably about a thousand there. And experience, although not completely in their favor since they are five manning, is going to be tapered down, or at least the lead of TTT is. Yule Scepter now available for the Death Prophet is going to negate a little bit of what TTT are bringing to the table. She's fast on her fingers, using up the Bat Rider, or using up herself inside the Skyrath Mage Ultimate could be crucial. Here, Lasso and Mid, it's going to be on Illusions. A crucial misplay coming out from Guanzo. That's going to be 90 seconds with no Bat Rider Lasso. Well, well baited coming out from TWJ. I didn't see whose illusion that was. It was Death Prophet that was able to secure that one. Tower and mid, presumably going to be denied out by <clears throat> the Radiant team. Not much the Team 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 can do about this. And it's going to be even more gold taken away that TTT are never going to see again. Uh, TWI already have in their pockets. And down mid, they know that they can't really stop this aggression. Running a core Venomancer as well as a Death Prophet and throwing the Faceless Void, pretty much sacking him in the offlane. In fact, this Faceless Void has almost nothing. He has a hand of Midas at 14 minutes in, which is not that great. It's going to shore up their late game a little bit more, but honestly, I think just going for the PTs, Mask of Madness, or BKB might have been better this game. Only time will tell whether this is a good choice coming out from Sexy Bamboo. He's going to get a bash right on <clears throat> 2207. Now with the heals of the Mechanism, as well as the Abaddon, he's going to be in fighting shape yet again inside the base they're going to bring down the vengeful spirit not much that she can do there looking fire as well as the remainder of exorcism are going to take down this tier 2 tower and TWDI the snowball is rolling and it's not stopping for anybody team 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 they needed to find these blink dagger jumps with the brewmaster and bat rider and they just haven't been able to and TWDI without the vengeful spirit are going to feel a lot more comfortable stepping up to the high ground I think this is a little bit too early to go for it hold your horses guys just get a little chip damage and then go to the tier 2 tower up in top but still this is bottom tower looking up for them where I didn't think they'd be able to do so. And a Midas recipe is still on the courier sending out to Sexy Bamboo. It's a little too late to back out now, and he is going to deliver that one at almost 15 minutes in. Super late game. I think the TWDI are going to be in an okay situation, but still, they're going to need an MKB on Faceless Void up against a presumable butterfly of the Medusa as well as the Brewmaster, Drunken Haze, and his just natural evasion. And they're going to need a lot more on Sexy Bambo if they want to hope to take it late. And even then, a stack Medusa can, I don't know, combat against what TWDI has. Their best hopes are just to kite her out. Barfly in the sidelines as well as the Brewmaster split. They don't get a lasso on anybody and are looking to lock somebody down. They're going to settle for Tenorlo with the Boulder Toss. and get some shot also landing, but it's not enough damage. Shakiro's pretty darn tanky, especially with the Nevotic Shield. It's the heals are going to be huge. Lasso's going to find Noobs RS. Can they focus him down fast enough? The Cronus Forever is going to catch out with three. Scar's Mage Ultimate still does a chunk of damage to Noobs RS. His DK is going to be able to get the Clap off. Noobs Arrest is going to be dropped down fairly low. The Eul Scepter as well as the Aphotic Shield are going to keep it alive for a little bit longer, but only for a little bit. There's going to be looking for our landing on the three heroes as well as Gale, but they're not able to follow that one up at 7 8, our kill score. And TWDI are without their highest net worth hero and might consider backing off, especially since their cooldowns are down. But then again, so are Team Team Teams. So they're going to decide to go into this tier 2 tower, and honestly, Team 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 don't have the best team to uh, go about counter pushing this. The eventual spirit house kind of nice as it's Firefly in the ground, but that doesn't stop Liquid Fire from the Jakiro. Just constant damage going the way of this T2. It's going to be taken sooner rather than later, and since it is fairly early in the game, Death Prophet's going to be back. Double Ice Path, as well as the Dual Breath. There's going to be a swap into the Magic Missile, but that's going to put 207 in a very compromising position. Ultimate from the Venomancer is going to land on a DK. Dragon Focus down to Neural is not able to do so. Time Walk away from Sexy Bamboo is going to keep him alive. The Medusa's right clicking for all she's worth. Can't do it. Another Double Ice Path is going to catch out the Brew Master and finish off his life. Guanzo is slowed by the Poison Sting. They still haven't lost anybody on TWDI, and this sustain is quite frankly ridiculous. They have the Abaddon as well as the Mechanism. That seems to be all the that they need in this game. Now they're going to take down this tier 2 with pretty much no contention further coming out from Team 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 as they just can't do anything. Jakiro takes the tower last hit and TWDI are in a wonderful position this game. Team Team Team, the early landing phase looked really good for them and when I thought the game would turn when they got those blink targets just never happened. The blinkins from the brewmaster as well as the bat rider have been fairly lackluster and although they maintain an experience advantage it doesn't matter when they're knocking on your door with liquid fire and exorcism. Level 2 exorcism was ticked just enough um, experience in order to get that one up for the Death Prophet, and honestly, that's all the TWDI need. This is going to be a Tier 3 tower at the very least. The Abaddon pick is working wonders for them, where I didn't think it would be able to. After the Tier 3, they're going to back off and presumably wait for another Exorcism, but maybe they can get a little bit more chip damage. If they find the opening, 
They might just go ahead and go. Five seconds on Cronus for cooldown. His lasso comes out, noobs are rest. They might have overstayed their welcome. His split comes through as well. He will subturn Death Prophet's going to delay a lot of the damage. But Taku's turned to stone. Will be focused down by the Medusa. The damage is almost going to be enough to bring him down straight up. But the Cronus Sphere by Sexy Bamboo. Oh, it's not going to be enough to save him. His DK secures a double kill with the Brulings. A Phonic Shield and Tunerl is going to keep him alive for a little bit more. Time walk down to the low ground from Sexy Bamboo. That Cronus Sphere was almost genius coming out from Sexy Bamboo, but it was just that close to saving the Venomancer as well as DP. Not enough mana for the mechanism, I think, on the Venomancer. Let's see, there's going to be a brawl inside the jungle. Jukes around are not going to save Tunerla as he gets crit to the face coming out from DK. No way to stop it, it's going to be a three for one trade and together we did it. End up biting off a little bit, a little bit more than they could chew, excuse me. It's going to be a gold swing of 1400, an experience swing of about 2,000, 1,800 thereabouts um, in the favor of Team 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 and... Although there's still an advantage for TWI, it's going to be slimmed down. And every push that they go that they don't get high ground is time for this Medusa to get farm. So I'm going to say that's a pretty convincing win for Team Team Team. Despite losing some damage on the range barracks, they're still in this game. And by no means are they losing. The Medusa still doesn't have her first major item at 18 minutes in. You can't really blame her. Um, she's been farming pretty well, hasn't died very much. But then again, hasn't been involved in enough kills to really bolster that farm. Still, once Medusa gets those two major items, presumably Mantis South Scotty, TWDI are going to struggle focusing her down. Unless Faces Void converts into some major damage. With the Mask of Madness, it does a decent amount, but that's not enough on its own. DK is able to get a tier 1 tower down and bottom by himself. Nobody else is in the vicinity. Is They're all looking towards top. Brewmaster is going to get back to the base, but he has to go all the way back to the well as he needs the extra mana for his clap and doesn't have the split available for 30 seconds. Anywho, we are going to see the wars coming out from the um, <clears throat> Venomancer just being a nuisance in general, canceling the Blink Dagger with the Bat Rider. No exorcism. It's time for go number two. As together we did, are going to focus down the range barracks. They should be able to take this one without much contention. Liquid Fire is going to be dropped onto it. Exorcism is also going to munch through it, already down to 260 HP, and that's not going to be regening anytime soon. Still no initiation from either side. Keep your eyes on the Bat Rider. As well as the Brewmaster. They're going to jump in with the Bat, pulling back to Nerla, but they don't focus down the Yule Scepter. It's going to delay things, and even the Scarlet Mage Ultimate, it's only level 1 at this point. Brewmaster Split's going to do a decent job, but the Chronosphere is going to catch up more enemy heroes than friendly heroes. Sexy Bamboo isn't focusing on anybody inside the Chrono, but he's able to save his allies, but not going to be able to save himself. DK is going to be dominating after picking off that last hit. And now the jump in again. Brewmaster is going to be back in his normal form. And normal form, Brewmaster really isn't all that scary. Going to be forced to blink away. And even though the trade is going to be a kill score favoring Team Team Team, it's going to be the racks going the way of TWDI. And whoa, Guanzo goes in with no lasso and just dies. That was questionable at best. Ultimate pop by Abaddon. Medusa is doing a decent amount of damage. Just clap comes through on the noobs. Our rest gets a range barracks, but not the melee. And they really want that extra structure down. Venomancer gets a kill onto Skyrath Mage. Down to the tick damage on the back lines of the fight. Medusa is going to be man fighting. Throws out a Mystic Snake, but that's about all that she can do. It does a decent amount of damage, but not enough as they're focused down the Venge. One more item attack from the DP is going to do her in. And now the Medusa out of mana. They're going to buy back on both the Skyrath as well as the Venge, but this might be too late as the melee barracks is being focused with the Liquid Fire and the right clicks. It's going to be enough one way or another. It is going to be taken down. Liquid Fire is going to do the trick. And now TWDI are going to be able to make their retreat at this point in the game. 20 minutes in. Rax is almost damning. If any hero can do it, it's a Medusa. And that's what Team 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 are hoping for this game. But right now, the snowball has been ridden by Together We Did It. It's not a very clean snowball. Um... If this were 6.81, it definitely would be, but you just look at that net worth graph. After that push, straight up. Most of his gold is in the pockets of the lesser support heroes, um, but still, that can make a pretty significant difference. You're going to be looking towards a 4-staff on the Abaddon eventually when he picks that up. A Yule Scepter now in the Chikiro is arguably the bigger pick. Counter-initiating a Bat Rider whenever he jumps in, as we saw the Death Prophet doing, as well as allowing the Death Prophet to use her own Yules. It's a lot of time that they can kite around the Medusa as well. Unlikely that Deuce is ever going to build a BKB. So just being able to throw her up into the air and delay things for a couple of seconds is going to be a wonderful tool at the disposal of Together We Did It. They also have a Faceless Void. If things really hit the fan for them, they can fall back on Sexy Bamboo's farm, which honestly at this point is fairly lackluster, which is the Midas hand, um, as well as the Mask of Madness power treads. But... With the Hand of Mice, you're always going to have a steady amount of income. Smoke around from the Dire Team, looking for the jump. Presumably on the Tunerla. They're not going to find the Jakiro, but Sexy Bamboo. 
Let's see if they're going to jump him. Right now, the Batrider is going to get vision, but they also have vision with the Venomous Wards. They're going to tag the Batrider, but not before he blinks away. He's not going to get his blink canceled any further and might be able to make his retreat out safely. Abaddon said to ping out the Medusa, but that smoke was very awkward coming out from Team Team Team. They're not able to find anything off the back of it. Vengeful Spirit TV's out as Yules. It's going to be double clicked on the Death Prophet. I'll just pretend that I didn't see that. And well, it's going to be regroup in mid coming out from Together We Did It. They're not going to look for any Roshans or anything, just the slow siege coming up from them. Ice Pass lands onto the Medusa. Exorcism and Pop, this is looking very similar to the push we saw up in top, and Team GT weren't able to do anything about that one. There's going to throw the Aphotic Shield and Death Prophet Healer up, and then wait until they have that available again. Up in the high ground, get the Spirits on the tower, back off. There's a little dance that they're playing, getting the Liquid Fire as well as the constant damage off on the tier 3 is eventually going to drop. A Chronosphere is going to be thrown aggressively by Sexy Bambo into 2. Ultimate from Sky with Mage is not going be avoided, but the backtracks are going to be nothing. It's only level 1 still. We are going to see the Brewmaster be focused down. He's going to be able to get split off, however, on very low amounts of HP. Vengeful Spirit is surviving, but not for long. They just need a little bit of damage. She's able to survive in the back lines. The Medusa is being focused down. I can't actually see where. Where is the Medusa? She's inside the well, and oh, the Venomancer tick damage. It's almost going to be enough to kill Guanto. Will the block maybe coming out would have been enough, and the Brewmaster is going to come back to his zone. He's going to be able to get the blink off, looking to make his hasty escape. He won't be able to do so. Nobody cancel out in time. Mule Scepter on the Jakira was available actually so maybe they could have been able to get that one still their barracks are exposed and slowly and maybe not so slowly those range barracks are going to fall and melee barracks soon to follow jumping from dk's last ditch effort to help defend against this but he has no split and without a split that brewmaster is not very scary especially with the items he went swapping the dupes harass they get stunned but that's pretty much vengeance just feeding herself to the enemy team medusa gets some decent split shot damage off but she is already on a buyback and she can't die again ice path is going to land squarely onto medusa they don't have any follow-up damage for this one it's just going to force her back to the base the yules are up in the air scarlet mage mystic flare is going to be dropped on tunerlo with the ancient seal amplifying it it is a decent amount of damage but still only level eight it's not going to be enough it's the double kills for Death Prophet as she's diving the well. Man, just focus these structures. Make it easy for me. We're going to see WWD be hit by a couple of Death Prophet auto attacks, and now the melee barracks will be focused down by Together We Did It. I think they have, at least in this game number one of the best of two series. Two barracks down. Medusa could do it, but only if she had the farm to back it up. And right now, the farm's in the pockets of Together We Did It. This Brewmaster, he had a wonderful start in lane and wasn't able to really transition that into anything, and that's really where I think things started to fall off of the rails for <clears throat> Team Team Team. Their early game, if you look at it up until about 8 minutes in, which is when the Blink Dagger was picked up, they look for a fairly hasty fight and they lose it single-handedly. After <clears throat> the buybacks, it's also going to be a huge bounce of net worth in the pockets of TWDI. Recognizing that there's still a Medusa, there is potential for comeback, but it's so slim. There's going to be, have to be some huge throws for TWDI, and as much as I hate doing it, I think I pretty much have to call it here. Liquid Fire is going to be making this rush on fairly easy, as is the Permabash coming out from Sexy Bambo. This could be Custer's last stand. Let's see if they're going to make the jump for it. They don't really have a great way to jump into this pit since the Batrider and the Brewmaster are not in the greatest of positions. Firefly is up towards the north, and Batrider now is going to join this party. Let's see if he's going to be able to make the steal his life. They see him, and now they cancel his Blink Dagger. No steals for you, Mr. Bat. That's going to be Sexy Bambo with the HS. Now going to go up towards the high ground looking for a Chronosphere. He's not going to be able to find either of these two heroes. As Medusa is going to make herself scarce towards the left. Not the fastest heroes, especially with the Mask of Madness. Sexy Bambo is going to be able to pursue. Ultimate from the <clears throat> Medusa is going to freeze up Sexy Bambo at a very awkward angle, and that should secure the Medusa's retreat. Time walk forward, still looking for more. Smokes up for that extra bit of movement speed. It's going to pop, and the Yule's up, and are instead going to settle for the Vengeful Spirit. And they should be able to find him. Jump in from DK. He's going to get silenced instantly, however, and there's nothing they can actually do about that. Tunerl is going to be pulled back in, but the Abaddon heals are making Tunerl a pretty darn tanky. They might be able to get the Shakira, but that's about it. And after he drops his load, that's about all that they need him to do. The Scarab Mage is going to be dropped down. The Chronosphere in the back lines doesn't. End up netting him that much, but the buyback from the Jakiro, and now Sexy Bambo is going to be going pretty darn ham. They don't have enough damage, but now Otaku throwing in the ultimate onto the Medusa. She's completely tapped out of mana. Gale, despite the Venomancer dying, should be one team fight for TWDI. Come on, Sexy Bambo, you know you want to dive that Medusa. She might just die to the AIDS, and she will. Venomancer is going to get the tick damage, and that's about it. Third lane of Barracks is probably going to fall in the favor of TWDI. No buyback available for them at Medusa for three and a half minutes. Sexy Bambo might just lose his Aegis to the towers, but heck, that's what it's there for. And DK is too darn low. We'll be the blink clap. Kills off Death Prophet, getting a dominating spree, but he needs to survive further than this. Sexy Bambo is going to lose his Aegis to a Concussor Shot Flame Break. He's backtracking like a boss, but it's not going to be enough as the Arcane Bolt after the silence is going to do him in. Now comes the task of killing Sexy Bambo again. Time walk down to low ground is going to keep him safer. Will it? The swap comes in. Magic Missile. They're going to be able to blow up Bambo. This is 
a lot more than I thought the Team 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 would be able to get out of this, and they're hanging on, if only by a thread. Tier 3 tower is down, mid barracks are exposed, but mid barracks are standing, and Team 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 want to make this a game, but honestly, I'm not sure how they're going to be able to do so. Oh, I feel like such a downer, but I, 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 I'm just not feeling it. I think at this point, Medusa needed to save it for Divine, but even then, like, what, what are you going to do? You're going to drop it and give it to Bamboo. You, you can't actually do that. So she's going to be going for the Scotty or Lincoln Sphere potentially, and mm, I, I just don't think it's going to happen. If it does happen, we're in for a treat, as we're going to be sitting here for about 30 more minutes while Medusa farms up, and TWDI consecutively don't go up for high ground, but I don't see why they can't. Every time that they come up to high ground, they're going to be taking down a structure. Even if they all die for it, they should be able to get Megas. I I don't really see that not happening. Um, but for Team Team Team's sake, maybe they're just looking to exhaust out Together We Did It. Looking towards the game too and potentially saying, Hey, we can just A-click the creeps and continuously clear these out and make it exhausting. But honestly, I don't think the TWDI are in any rush at all. In Faceless Void, he's sitting on some items. He has now a Mithril Hammer. Sexy Bamboo, not farming the greatest, but... What's so bad about this? They are going to pull back 60 Bamboo, but he's instantly yules up. The damage from the Sky of Mage Ultimate is going to be enough to get 60 Bamboo. Unless he backtracks enough of it, he won't. Back apart down on the ground, going to be eating through a couple of the heroes, but the Medusa split shot's doing work. Barlow's going to be able to get... <clears throat> Excuse me, the shield onto himself as Jakiro is brought down by Medusa's auto attacks. However, now completely tapped down mana, Medusa is not very tanky at all. Death Prophet is going to be pursuing onto the back lines, looking for a bat rider of her own. Don't think she's going to be able to find it in time, but it's a pretty darn fast hero. We'll be able to throw him up in the air, looking for the Crypt Storm, and we'll be able to cancel that Blink Dagger. Now for the silence, no Firefly for you, and he already spent it to boot. We're going to see Taco in the mid, eat a clap from DK, but this isn't a fight that DK can win. Going to be forced straight up TP. There's nobody to cancel it unless he No, it's on cooldown from the Death Prophet. Can't and find that anywhere else. The Jakiro is already dead, and the Faceless Void is already dead and gone. It's a two for two trade, but Medusa and Batrider gone is almost a worst case scenario for Team Team Team. Maybe Brewmaster with his ultimate down is a little bit worse, but he spent it and wasn't able to do anything with it. This might just be game, and definitely it's going to be Mega Creeps. Even without an Exorcism, the right clicks of the Serpent Wards are Plague Wards. My goodness, I've messed that up like all around today. Yule Scepter onto the Skyrath Mage, a last ditch effort to help him defend these barracks, but they're going for the melee, and I think they can take it, even though it's. Not the easiest task for them. Just look at this poison tick damage on DK. They throw a magic missile on Noobs Rust. They're delaying. They're going to be able to get the lasso back under tower, but they're going to jump in with Sexy Bamboo, catching a Batrider mid. Animation swap is actually going to just swap the Vengeful Spirit into the Corona Sphere. She doesn't use it on an ally, and Faces Void is able to run back fast enough. The heals are they going to be enough. Medusa is getting a lot of traction from that split shot. Sexy Bamboo as well as Bartlett dropping low. The magic missile is going to do in the Abaddon. The barracks are still standing, and Medusa is looking for the last stand. Liquid Fire onto the melee barracks, however, is probably going to spell the end of that structure. Vengeful Spirit gets herself a double kill on sidelines she cleans up bamboo with the magic missile as well as the medallion they are going to be able to silence up and take the melee barracks and game or not whether medusa lives here and she's not going to without mana there's not a chance it's going to be a fairly straightforward win for <clears throat> today we did it or together we did it excuse me they had a plan and they executed it i think that's pretty much the story of it it only took like one crucial mistake um, for Team 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 or a couple bad team fights for them to completely lose control of this game, which I think they had at the early portions. Um, but still, together we did it, are going to do it, but this is not over as it is a best of two. We're going to get into game two very shortly, so don't go anywhere. Hefley TV will have some more Dota coming up shortly.